Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Delta Dialogues, your monthly call for the integrated photonics community. My name is Johan Smeets and I'll be your host today. Last time we were broadcasting live from the MIT campus in Cambridge, the United States of America, where we were attending the spring session of the IPSR International Roadmap Meeting. This month we'll be diving into the Photonic Integration Technology Center, also known as the PITC, and its recently launched metrology program. The PITC is an open innovation center for integrated photonics and is a collaboration between TNO, Photon Delta, Technical University of Eindhoven and the University of Twente. In today's program, we will first have Sylvester Lutowski, scientific director of the PITC, to discuss with me about the PITC itself and the metrology program. After uh, Sylvester, we will have three companies that are taking part in the metrology program and we want to hear from them their perspective. Why is this topic so important? Why did they join the program? What are they looking to get out of it? And who else should join? You can expect to hear from Augusto Mandelli, who is the Global Director of Sales, Service and Marketing at Ficontech. Then we'll have Luc Augustin, the Chief Technology Officer of Smart Photonics. And last but not least, Paul von Ulse, Chief Executive Officer at Salant Engineering. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat so I can address them right away to the speakers. And are you ready? Let's go. All right. Sylvester, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Jan. All right, wonderful. Thank you for joining us today live at uh, Delta Dialogues. I believe you're calling in uh, all the way from uh, Romania, is that correct? Yes, indeed, this is correct. I'm attending International Conference on Optical Transparent Network in Bucharest. Oh. Great. Well, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to call in with us today and to talk about the PITC and the metrology program. So, Sylvester, as the scientific director of the PITC, um, can you tell us a bit more about uh, the PITC? What is it that you guys do there? So, you already did uh, a, a, a brief introduction. So, it, it is an applied R&D center or open innovation center, if you will, which has been set up uh, in response to actually a, a, a photon delta ecosystem needs, it's been set up by the University of Twente, TNO, Eindhoven University of Technology, and of course, uh, photon delta. Yeah. As such, uh, technology center, the PATC is, is, is geared up to, to, to tackle a challenges related uh, to the adoption of integrated photonics in, in, in wide context industry and, and, and also uh, accelerate its uptake to the to the outside world, yeah, to the products. Hmm. And uh, as such, yeah. yeah, the PATC has defined its R and D agenda in in, in, in several uh, uh, shared programs, shared innovation programs. Yeah, these are both technology and application oriented. All right, that sounds like a like a very important function. I mean, to bridge, let's say, the supply chain that has the technology with the various markets, and to overcome the challenges uh, that, that that are standing in the way, let's say, of mass adoption. Um, so you mentioned you you in order to do so and to fulfill this ambition, you are running uh, various programs, right? Maybe can you tell us a bit more about these uh, these programs? So, yeah, we operate on these uh, shared uh, uh, innovation programs. So each program identifies a, a, a subject-wise a, a group of challenges. Yeah, so we have a metrology program, we have indium phosphate uh, program, we have a, a silicon nitrate program, we, we, we have a heterogeneous integration program. Yeah, these are, these are the, 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 the four uh, technology-orientated programs and kind of in, in orthogonal lines to those we shaping also application oriented programs to identify the common challenges and make sure that really the, 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 the technological advancements that we support are fitting well the, 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 the applications, the current applications, the, but also the, the future applications. And we do this uh, collectively, yeah? So shared innovation program, we do it in a combination with the, with, with the partners who join a program, yeah? So identify the challenge, and every, it's very important and in such setting, 
everyone understands what we do, it's collective. Yeah? This is something that all of us identified as being so critical and yet so important that we can only do it when we join the forces. Yes, all right, interesting. And so, um, if I recall correctly, uh, the metrology program is actually the latest program uh, that you guys launched at the PITC. I believe it was launched at the end of last year, in November. Um, can, you, can you give us a bit more information about uh, what, uh, what you guys are trying to do with the metrology program and why it's so important? So, definitely I can, because I'm also a program manager for the metrology program. It is the one that I, that I, that I drafted from the scratch. So it's divided into, into, into six work packages. Yeah, well, seven, but I, 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 I would just skip the, the management one. Uh, all work packages or technical work packages are being actually led or they've been owned by our industry partners in the program. Yeah? So we identified subjects related to the data, to the equipment, to the tooling, to the, to the, to the next generation characterization and test methods for the next generation products. And, and in addition today to that, we also invest into, into talent development, into upskilling uh, uh, staff at the existing companies, but also training the, 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 the young talent. And uh, we were lucky enough to identify this subject so well in alignment with, the, with, for example, the IPSRI, so with the global roadmaps for the integrated photonic systems, that it became so appealing offer that we were happy enough to have eight industry launching partners or a launch of the of the program we are deeply in the discussion with uh, with with some with more businesses now well i think at the at this point with many of them the question is not if they will join but rather when and i think the when maybe sooner than than some of us would uh, would predict all right that's, uh, that's good news to hear, uh, Sylvester. And uh, maybe, so you're saying uh, you, have, you have eight uh, launching partners. Um, I think uh, three of them are, are, are going to present something in this call, right? So Salant Engineering, we have Ficon Tech and Smart Photonics. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the other ones? What type of organizations are, have already joined this initiative and what type of organizations do you think uh, would still need to join or what, what, what is missing? Well, so so today uh, we have Augusto, Luke, uh, and Paul. They 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 already represent uh, kind of different uh, different parts of the supply chain. So we have a foundry, we have a we have a we have a, we have a well, tooling, probing, advanced systems for for industrialization of the of the of the of the peak production chain, and and also the ATE supplier. Actually, very interesting uh, partner is Salant Engineering, comes from the semiconductor electronic side, yeah, and they see a, a, a big opportunity in integrated photonics. I will leave it, of course, to, to Paul maybe to, to expand later on. In addition to those, we have a design house who is with us. Uh, we talk in a lot, well, uh, we have a design house with us. We have another ATE who comes from slightly different angle than Salant, these Apex Technologies, they specialize in in, in state-of-the-art uh, characterization equipment, but at the same time, they supply the products which, 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 which fulfill these, some of our objectives, the modularity, the compact form factor, and, uh, and, and support um, great lead scalability, scalability. And they work, want to work on us how to even expand more on that, and also how to make sure that these systems support the next generation products. Yeah? So what is missing there? Yeah? Maybe, maybe frequencies around 100 gigahertz and beyond uh, these are not readily available today. Well, one may argue, yes, the, the benchtop systems do exist, but they hardly ever are geared towards a, a production type of environment that we really, really are focused on in this meteorology program. Yeah, I see. Okay, so that's really a, a wide range of stakeholders that all bring something different to the table. Um, but that way, I think you can really um, run this program in the, in, in the most effective way possible, right? Um, Sylvester, just maybe to also come back to the to the why question on this metrology program, we briefly touched upon some of these things. Huh? But I think uh, the, the, the testing um, uh, is, is is one of the very let's say expensive steps right now in the in the value chain of integrated photonics. And um, if we want to scale, I think this is uh, something that we, we we need to overcome. What what do you think um, are the most important um, let's say uh, elements uh, yeah, that that can help to overcome this uh, this challenge. Well, I would say the most important element is that we really consider the test 
and measurements while we're thinking of our future product. Yeah? And we should do it as early as possible in the process because only in this way we can identify whether the production flow goes as predicted, we have all means to interrupt it and fix it. And, and if we collect all data that is necessary, we have really, really uh, good means to, to optimize the process windows here, yeah? accelerate the, the, the production, increase the yield. It, of course, depends to whom we talk in the, in, in the, in the supply chain. Yeah? Our partners who would be rather uh, tooling or equipment suppliers, they can, they can benefit because if their solutions offer a gain in time spent per test that, 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 that that's potentially a very good opportunity for them so i think it benefits yeah. both the supply chain itself but also the the customers of all of us yeah and so and so you're you're, you're, you're you touched upon uh, you need to start at, at, at the very beginning already when you when you talk about the importance of testing and how we can uh, let's say streamline those activities w throughout the chain uh, is that also why you're having a chip design company uh, in in there is, is is do you think already at that level um, uh, people should start thinking about how am i going to test my product how am i going to test my my, my circuit Definitely. So, so we work with the design houses here. Yeah? So they, they specialized and they, they typically one of the very first ones who, who, who get in touch with the, with the customer who may or may not have any idea about, uh, about integrated photonics. So it is important that they do also make sure that, that they think about the test, the assembly and the packaging, because our observation is it is something that is pretty normal in semiconductor uh, world, but for us in photonic is new and frequently companies overlook that and then yeah it all start to contribute to this high cost of, of test as you, as you as you mentioned yes so this is yeah. important actually yeah. even one step further we also train people at the companies and businesses and young people to think about photonics to understand so hopefully in a few years the, 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 the new designers will immediately think okay how do I make my peak based products how do I test it how, how do I make sure it actually does what it's supposed to do but also it gets uh, manufactured correctly. Yes, indeed. All right, interesting. Um, so uh, we spoke about uh, uh, the, the designing uh, also for testing, uh, and I think also uh, the equipment manufacturers that are in this uh, in this uh, uh, call are, uh, are, are have something important to bring to the table. Um, I wanted to um, uh, ask you: Is there um, any uh, well? progress that, that we could make also when it comes to standardization. I mean, now you're talking about, okay, we need to, we need to make sure that the chip designers design their chips in a way that they can be tested, but how, uh, uh, what's the status today on the, when it comes to standardization on those, on those kind of topics? Well, you're, you know me well, and you know my efforts towards, uh, towards standardizing. Uh, probably a large part of the photonic supply chain uh, recognized that as well. Um, but to me, it is, it is critical. Yeah, uh, uh, as we see it even today, we have different uh, points of the supply chain sitting here together. It is, it is this standardization that is needed to make it possible for those to interoperate and communicate. Yeah, N not only when, when when we communicate as human beings, but how the uh, points interface from one to another. And through the standardization, it's probably the most efficient way. It accelerates the uptake. It also increases the the trust to the technology. You know. Yeah, and do you think with this program in the PITC you might be able to create new standards in that way, or to contribute? To Definitely, that? yes. Well, it's a shared research agenda where actually yeah. all these partners work together, and, and 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 even those a little bit on the skeptical side, they, they they sooner or later start to recognize the value of of this simplified interfacing from one point to another. Yeah, and and yeah. this is not only in these distributed supply chains; they also large vertically integrated businesses here yeah, which which deal with the integrated photonics they internally also suffer from lack of standardization and interoperability and it's yeah. on all different layers the data the software tools the equipment so yeah it all needs to be able to play and interact with each other in a, in a very easy way um, maybe last question before we move on to our next speaker sylvester i thank you very much for all the insights and explanations that you gave um, is there is there a limited number of, of, of participants to the program? Uh, I mean, you mentioned now you have eight, you have quite some companies in the pipeline that want to contribute. Do you have a max of, uh, of, of, of contributors? Yes, I do. It's infinity. Aha! <laughs> so the answer All is right. no, there is no limit really. Yeah? 
of course we have to manage the process but more partners it's it's actually it makes us all stronger yeah we will yeah. tackle the challenges probably sooner than we even hope and, and schedule all right and, and, and make the work more relevant of course yeah if it's a yes. to, to wider group of partners Indeed. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Sylvester, for for your for your sorry, thoughts and um, uh, have a, a very good uh, event there uh, in in Bucharest. I wish you all the best. Uh, it's time for us to move on to our next speaker. Thank you, Jörg. Thank you, Potom Delta. All right. So our next speaker of today is uh, Augusto Mandelli. Uh, Augusto, uh, he is the director of sales, service, and marketing at Ficon Tech um, in a global role. Um, Augusto, if you could maybe share your screen, um, put on your camera, your microphone, then I would say that yes, we can hear you. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I don't know where from where you're connected. So let me share my desktop. Let me know if you can see the slides yes i think we can see your slides okay perfect so the floor is yours thank you Jorn. thank you Jorn. i i found the introduction from sylvester very um keen to these slides because i'm taking pretty much the same angle that um that sylvester was was presenting so the today what i want to exp to, to to present is basically why Ficon Tech uh, is um, is part of this PITC program. What's the 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 reason behind? Maybe that can become also a matter of inspiration for uh, for others. Uh, I want to. I have a small caveat. I'm probably the one of the youngest in this specific field when it comes to silicon photonics and photonics in general. Since I joined Ficon Tech only two and a half years ago, even though I have more than 30 years of uh, experience in the industry but when it comes to specifically to testing uh, i would say that my experience especially coming from the uh, commercial uh, off the shelf uh, industrial world uh, as uh, consumer electronics is quite vast uh, since i've been spending uh, Uh, 26 years uh, in an uh, other organization expressively working on a uh, test and measurement system. So I might maybe come with a specific uh, angle into this discussion. So I guess that uh, you know a bit about Ficontech. Ficontech is a small medium enterprise, uh, still quite relevant in this uh, specific field. Uh, we have an international footprint uh, with over 1000 machines delivered uh, all over the globe. We are um, German based. Uh, I mean, speaking from Akim, our headquarter. Um, our motto is to, man to uh, manufacturing made light. We really uh, follow the our customers from uh, uh, in many different areas of the applications. As you can see, uh, we work in Datacom, HPLDs, um, um, uh, fiber sensing, uh, um, camera modules, uh, and different markets. I don't have to To, uh, to sell you what we do, because I, I imagine that you already know a bit. We are very famous when it comes to automation for uh, production from R&D application all the way to high volume manufacturing. So the two functions that we perform are align and attach and test and qualify. Our goal with PITC is really around the so-called test and qualify function, because this is exactly what the metrology program that we are part of is uh, uh, providing, is focusing on a PITC. So today I'm really focusing about this specific aspect. And so I want to quickly discuss uh, why uh, Ficon Tech uh, decided to join the PITC. There are three main reasons. The, well, Ficon Tech has been always very keen to um, activities in the research world. Uh, the second one is the, the relevance of testing for optical and hybrid testing for photonics and silicon photonics. And the last one is a commercial interest, as uh, it should be for any company that is investing in this direction. We are not just a pro bono um, um, organization. So let me deep dive a little further into these uh, three specific reasons. When it comes to the research activities, uh, Ficontech has been around uh, working in the research world uh, for uh, over two decades. Uh, even though we are uh, um, just a little uh, over 200 employees, we have a very strong uh, 
R&D team here in Akim, and we have also application lab labs distributed uh, across the globe. Uh, apart from the, uh, the one in Akim, we have a strong collaboration with Tyndall. We have one in the US at Creole. We have the Chinese uh, application lab. The, way, the reason why we invest so much in this kind of activities uh, is because uh, they help us uh, in a um, uh, ever-growing uh, industry like uh, photonics uh, to identify new trends and develop the next generation of technology. This is something that uh, we cannot um, we cannot leave behind. This is a super critical uh, function to intercept the new developments and to be to stay ahead of the development curve compared to also to our competitors. And the best way is engaging with the universities and um, in the and the research um, research entities across the globe. And that, as an as an element, uh, brings also innovation at Ficontech as a as a side effect. We just restructured the um, our uh, um, R&D activities. We created uh, uh, six main verticals with six uh, uh, principles um, working on these verticals. One of those specifically being testing. For us, testing is a strong area of focus. Uh, from an industrial and R&D standpoint. That's why this is going uh, really very much in line with the PITC metrology program. And the last but not least, and here I resonate with what Sylvester just said, this is the best way to promote collaboration and technology standardization. I'm coming again from a completely different uh, industry. I've been working in aerospace and defense, energy, commercial, uh, uh, electronics equipments uh, for uh, many, many years, and, and um, standardization is paramount. Without standardization, you don't, you don't provide uh, mass adoption, you don't scale up easily, you don't keep cost under control. Standardization is the probably one of the best ways, if not the only way, to get to mass adoption. So um, with Sylvester, uh, we have been also discussing about this topic many times. Uh, I know all the activities that are taking are in place. Uh, I think uh, that uh, PITC uh, is uh, uh, the right incubator or one of the best incubators to um, promote this kind of activity. And uh, that's also a call to action for uh, other players into this, uh, this arena. Um, the second point that I wanted to touch base with uh, is the testing uh, is paramount, specifically cost of test is paramount. Um, here you have one slide with data coming from a specific analysis from the YOLE report. Um, as you can see, um, cost of test, based off some uh, um, analysis that might be is a little too aggressive, can be up to 80% of the final uh, system uh, ASP. So this is uh, really um, unbearable level of cost. Um, for your information, in consumer electronics, uh, um, the test is called the, um, ne un uh, the necessary evil because it's eroding margins. Uh, and we are talking about uh, a cost of test that is around three to five percent of the ESP of the end user product. So you can see that the, the, the difference between five to 80, but let's say even 40, just for the sake of uh, is still uh, way too much if you really want to make uh, any company profitable and go mass uh, um, on a mass scale. So this is a, a super important uh, call to action. We must reduce the cost of test and cost of test can be reduced uh, in many ways, improving technology, improving uh, uh, testability. Sylvester clearly mentioned uh, the, the concept of DFT designed for, uh, uh, for, for test. This goes in line with other sciences like DFA, designed for automation, and DFM, designed for manufacturing. These three vectors are all equally important when uh, thinking about the evolution, the evolution of uh, any product in a, a delight of uh, mass adoption. Um, obviously, this is, uh, as I said, this is a factor that has to be considered, and again, I believe and we believe at Ficontech that this metrology program at PATC can help to streamline this DFT um, approach through 
standardization and through optimization of technologies around the toolings. Uh, the last point, oh, by the way, obviously this is an ongoing project, this is an ongoing effort. If you see how we were developing the testers uh, uh, three years ago, five years ago, and what is uh, testing now, it looks like, by the way, one of those uh, testers uh, is under production at this moment, and this with, it is one of the tools uh, that will be um, delivered at the facility at PA, uh, for PATC, for the metrology program. As you can see, there, there's been already a large evolution and improvement into this, but it's an ongoing process, uh, and we look forward to improving this even further. Um, the last point uh, is the, let's call it commercial interest in the Dutch ecosystem and beyond. I mean, the, the Dutch ecosystem is one of the most vibrant. Uh, everyone knows about uh, the large uh, subsidies go, uh, that the Dutch government uh, has been um, giving through uh, Photon Delta. Um, we have several connections to the Dutch environment. Uh, anyway, many um, Many Dutch players are already customers or prospects or partners. I mentioned here as an example, Fix, that is a customer and a partner of ours in many activities. And again, I believe that collaboration is the way forward to standardization and mass market adoption. So, in, so these three vectors are the main reason why we at FICONTECH invested and teamed with PITC because we truly believe that uh, this is the way forward uh, to improve mass adoption, uh, improve uh, DFT, and get into a better um, integration and collaboration in the market. Thank you very much, Augusto. What a perfect presentation. You stayed right in time as well. And I think you really touched upon all the points that are, that are very relevant for the audience on this topic of, of testing, standardization, design for testing. Um, so I would like to really thank you for, for, uh, for this. Um, I think you know, a, a couple of things stuck to me and I maybe have uh, one or two questions to ask you, if that's okay. Um, I think uh, you, you mentioned, of course, that the testing now is, is the, the, let's say, the uh, ratio of the testing cost of the, full, of the full product is unbearable right now. And, and we need to change things. We need to step up with design. We need to step up with standardization that's needed. And then with the optimization of the tools. Um, if you look at it uh, you know, from, um, uh, from this cost perspective, where do you think we would need to go in cost? but also maybe in, in time. Like, uh, do you have any idea on how much time does it take to test a, a wafer right now and, and where do you think this should go to in the future? Very good question. I think that um, I think that at this moment uh, it depends very much on uh, what is on the wafer and yeah. on this because it's, uh, it's a multiplying factor uh, and one of the, the so I, I've been doing some calculations uh, for some um, specific cases uh, and um, testing a wafer can take uh, uh, literally a full day, if uh, not longer in some cases, oh. uh, depending on the component uh, that is uh, your testing. Um, mm -hmm. And definitely this is a huge cost. Not to mention that uh, testing and then realizing that uh, the yield of the components is not good enough, uh, that opens up an, a completely different area that is how to rework those, uh, if there is a way to rework those components to improve the yield. Um, yeah. There are technology efforts around this, uh, like uh, parallelizing uh, testing uh, in other fields, uh, uh like in electronic testing this is uh, obviously something that has been uh, uh, already developed uh, quite intensively so how to do parallel testing how to optimize the results uh, usage uh, doing more things uh, in the same amount of time uh, at this moment uh, the way i see the most complex part is that many components uh, are hybrid and you have to test at the same time uh, the optical and the electrical part and this mm -hmm. is imposing quite a few challenges. Uh, yeah. So it's very difficult to parallelize and to optimize these, uh, these functions. We have ideas mm -hmm. on how to do this. And again, if we come to a standardization, a standardized way to look at this problem, that we will help, especially a tool provider like us. Because yeah. then you can invest uh, very thoroughly into one direction instead of just uh, having a broadband of options. Yeah. So yeah, that's a very good point.
Yeah, all right. Thank you very much, Augusto. I'll, I, I would have a lot more questions for you, but uh, it's time to move on to our next speaker. I also want to address the audience that if you have any questions that come up to you at a later stage, you can just uh, ask them us uh, either through the chat or if you're watching this on the recording by email uh, and we'll forward uh, those questions to Augusto. Augusto, thanks again for your time and I'll uh, speak to you again at a later stage. Thank you very much. All right, our next speaker of today is Luc Augustin, and uh, Luc is the uh, Chief Technology Officer of Smart Photonics. Smart Photonics is an Indian phosphide foundry, uh, pure play here located in Eindhoven, the Netherlands. And uh, Luc is going to share his perspective on a metrology, the testing and the program at the PITC. Luc, can you please unmute yourself, sh uh, put on your camera and share your slides? Ah, I can see you, very good. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I'll share my slides. Hold on a second. It should be visible right now. Yes, indeed. Okay. Well, yeah, thanks for the introduction. And I indeed, I want to tell you a bit on uh, if my, yeah, there it comes. So on, on testing photonic integrated circuit at Smart Photonics at our company and also on how we see testing uh, taking an important place testing and characterization i must say i'll tell you a few words on that um so to to start give a short introduction on smart photonics you already told a bit on that uh, but uh, we are a foundry we are a foundry for photonic integrated circuits it means we we fabricate we manufacture devices for our customers and um so we have the processes in place. We have a production line in place to uh, to manufacture the devices. And we do that using a PDK, a process design kit. I'll say a few more, more words on that topic uh, later. What is crucial is that our customers, they don't need to understand the every quantum well or every edge depth of a, uh, of a chip, but they can use functional building blocks with which they can compile a circuit. And that really is a nice, uh, way of working that we can address multiple people to make complex circuits for these uh, and that's that's what we do here in eindhoven uh, in our uh, in our facilities um, what we do is uh, we use indium phosphide and why do we use indium phosphide it's the only material that is suited for making lasers amplifiers as well as passive and active components so we can make uh, lasers modulators uh, waveguides to connect it all, split us. So all the functionality can be done uh, on uh, as a single wafer. We use a technology we call but joint integration. So we do not need to, that is, uh, so we can put different materials connected to each other so that we do not need to compromise the performance of uh, either of the functionalities, but we can optimize actives and passives for their optimal functionality. And that can all be done with, with, with indium phosphide. As an additional advantage, and that's, that's really where we're talking about here, is that because of the fact that we can integrate the whole device, we can integrate the passive circuitry, we can integrate the active functionality, we can also have a full on-way for electrical testing. We can put a laser uh, on the device, we can put the circuitry and we can put a detector. We can all monolithically integrate that. So basically for free, you get test electrical testability which is a huge advantage. And that's what we want to, to profit more, more from to get, uh, to get the data. So that's why we use indium phosphide. So that, uh, that makes uh, us uh, be able to, to, to integrate the full set of functionalities. Um, then a few words on our PDK, our process design kit. It's, it's a key element of our technology. So it's the way we can uh, help our customers design their chips. But for that, we, we have defined what we call building blocks. So functional elements that uh, are present that a, a customer can take from our library. And with that, they can form a, a chip. So they can make very complex chips without knowing all the details. And that is, that is the core of our technology. For that, we need to very well characterize, we need to very well model all these uh, components. So their data measurements is, is, is crucial. So it's really all about getting data, getting data and getting data for all these uh, all these elements. 
and that's exactly where where uh, for us one of the the focal points of this this uh, uh, metrology program is about on getting getting the data and uh, yeah, getting that in a in a fast and of cost effective fashion. So if you then zoom in a bit on the requirements uh, of what we see on the testing side, it's automation is crucial. As already the previous speaker also indicated, automation and ideally wafer level testing of complex devices so that we can extract parameters from uh, the wafer level uh, data. That allows us to do quick testing. That allows us to gather statistics. That's gather statistics over the wafer but also uh, from wafer to wafer and from all the individual elements. So that's for, on one hand, for the building blocks to get data for our, our modeling, but also for the customer product in the end that we can test on wafer so that we can already uh, validate the, the functionality and qualify devices on wafer level. And that's, that is crucial. So that is, that is on, on the testing part. Another important part is the characterization because we, we have to have these building blocks. We have to get this functionality for our customers that they understand what every single building block does. For that also, we need an optimized uh, infrastructure. So that means most of the time we cannot measure all the properties on wafer. So we have to do also a lot of end of line testing. So we have to cleave our devices. We have to, to do an optical in and out coupling to get the light in and out, to get more uh, of the, the, the key elements, the key properties of the building block. So these are basically two topics that we, we, we want to have addressed in the metrology program and actually what we're working on. So that is so a few words on, on PIC test as a first project that is started in this metrology program. Uh, supported by Photon Delta and a number of the partners that Sylvester also pointed out, where we want to work together on this this next generation test development. So it's it's all about increasing the throughput, reducing the cost for testing, but also development of new characterization techniques to get easy access to parameters, to get uh, easy access to more data, to more characterization uh, properties, and to be able to, to upscale this test equipment for volume production, because in the end we don't want to measure a few thousand, but we have to, to go to millions of devices that we want to test cost effectively. So that is that is on, on the, the, the technical contents. And a, a crucial other aspect is to train future engineers for our industry. Because as we all know, getting talent is very, very challenging at the moment. And this program will also help and support the training of engineers is a crucial aspect of this uh, this project. So that's really also the reason why we are uh, why we are joining this program. And uh, to to emphasize this a bit more, I have a, a small example of, of some of the achievements that we already have with uh, working together with PITC on this uh, on this program. So this is you can can consider it as a quite a simple component. It's it's a passive Coupler. So this put, light is uh, is put into the device and it, it's split into two outputs. So we want to know how much losses does this component have? What is the imbalance? And also what is its uh, so its tolerances to to process variations and and how does uh, to all to 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 model that? So before that we need uh, a lot of die level measurements. We have to couple light in. We have to couple light out. And that's uh, done on on chips like uh, depicted over here. So there's there's a few tens of devices on every chip, and we need to do all kind of measurements uh, to get this this information out. So really, we need to optically align the input. We need to optically align the output, and then do uh, thousands of measurements uh, overall of the wafer to get all the data, to get a lot of data, to get the variations, to get statistics, but also. To get to to make a design of experiments to understand the manufacturability of this component to understand the tolerances, so that is that is a crucial part that's we, that we are working on, and actually we have some some nice successes where we we, we measured uh, those devices. There's there's some automation. Uh, well, there's this work being done on the automation. Now it's still rather slow, but there's there's a clear route to get it uh, to get it faster. And that's that's how we can collect all this data, and then we can match it to simulations, as you see also in the in the the right bottom picture, where we can with this data 
calibrate our simulations and with that we can uh, improve our modeling and for that then the customer help the customer in designing their circuits so this is a nice example of what we actually are doing and where we already uh, harvesting the fruits of this uh, this program so this uh, this brings me then to the to the end so in summary and so for us we need a lot of data uh, and that's that's where we need automation we need also a standard way of measuring in the the devices as has been said by by previous speakers as well but next to that we also need to validate end products of our customers we need to be able to test them quickly that we can uh, assess which which are the good ones which are the, the ones that we have to remove so for that high speed testing is required and also new methods for improving the efficiency so that brings me to the end of my uh, my talk and uh, thank you for for listening Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Luke. It was uh, it was a, a, a interesting presentation. Again, a good perspective from a foundry point of view on uh, on, on the relevance of testing. Uh, you mentioned you need more data, data, and data uh, in order to help you also characterizing the building blocks, uh, so that uh, users, uh, say potential users, can design their chips in a more uh, in a more reliable way, right? Uh, which that that one is actually important also for the for the adoption of PICs, of course. Um, just a question from my side. So um, uh, this data, where uh, where is this coming from? Is it typically something the testing? Is this typically something that you do at Smart Photonics, or is this something that's done at your customers' end? Maybe you can can shine some light on that. Well, that's a very interesting question, and also that's really where we have to make a distinction. On one end, we do the testing for getting the data for our, our building blocks for our PDK. That is done in-house. So there we, we need a lot of data to, to build up statistics and to, to be predictable. Uh, that's, a, that's a crucial part. The other part is also testing, uh, so functional testing. And we want to do that as early as possible in the line. So part of that is done at Smart Photonics. But also as we mature, part of it will be done also at outsourced uh, test houses. And also at, at the customer in the end, you want to do more in-depth functional testing to, to do the chip. So there's, there's multiple aspects uh, to test and characterization. Yeah, all right, I understand. And so, and, and, and you said that this program is will help you to gather more data. Can you elaborate maybe on how this program will, get, will, will give you more data? Are you getting more data from other uh, organizations throughout the chain or what, what's, the, what's the goal? Well, the goal is to optimize the, the, the methodology for doing okay. on-wave testing. Yeah. And, uh, for first, as I said before, the, the building block data, the PDK contents, that is our responsibility. So that will be done at Smart Photonics. Yes. And uh, so, but but it's developing the methodology and it's it's collaborating to get uh, new insights, and that helps us in getting more data and more yeah. reliable data. Yeah, I see. Um, maybe one last question before we move on to our next speaker is: uh, you say uh, uh, you said high-speed testing is is really required eh, in order to scale and to and to gather this this data. Um, you mentioned something about automated uh, automated wafer level testing, um, and uh, I remember Augusto uh, was mentioning in his presentation that sometimes testing of a wafer can take up uh, of an entire can take up an entire day. What what's uh, what's the uh, at Smart Photonics where you want, where do you want to work towards to? What, what would be the ideal uh, testing situation in terms of time consumption? Uh, zero would be <laughs> our, <laughs> our end goal. No, but, uh, if we be realistic, yes. Uh, yeah. No, but there, also here I, I have to make a distinction. What we will do on, on testing on wafer level will be to qualify a wafer. And then yeah. on the... Uh, uh, on the customer side, there will be a more thorough, more in-depth testing, and then then we come into the the hour per or day per per wafer. I think if we uh, we set ourselves a goal to reduce the test time with a factor of ten, mm -hmm. uh, if for us wafers should be measured in in well, let's say less than an hour, yeah, it will right. be a nice achievement. That will be a nice achievement. Okay, so maybe in a, in a year or so, I will I will uh, I will give you a call and I will check on if the if the PITC program helped you to to achieve those goals. Um, thank you very thank you very much, Luke, for your contribution and your time. Um, and it's time for us to move on to our next speaker. Is the final speaker of today. We 
have Paul here, uh, live uh, calling in from Salent Engineering. Paul is the Chief Executive Officer. Uh, welcome, Paul. Uh, can you, uh, well, you already put on your camera, I see. I think we can also hear you. Um, and you already shared your screen. Oh, you're, you're very fast. Uh, so I would say the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to tell a bit more about Salon Engineering and what we are doing in this program. Um, of course, being the last of the presenters, it's always a challenge because uh, Augusto and uh, Augustine already told a lot. Um, so I, I, uh, I have an easy job in that respect. Do, do you see, by the way, my screen? Yes, we see. Yes. Okay. So a bit more about uh, to start with Salon Engineering. Salon Engineering is an, uh, indeed an, um, an um, engineering Maybe you can put it full screen. Uh, sorry, uh, Paul. It's uh, We see it not in presenter mode. Yeah, let me try to get it there. There we go. See. Can you see it in full presenter yes, mode? Yes, now it's full screen. Thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you are to you see our uh, building, um, and as you already can see on the on the building, it says that uh, stage uh, test technology center. So we already quite a long time in in the business, uh, thirty years now, uh, over thirty years in testing normal semiconductors. And um, what we saw is that the the new generation chips they have a lot of new challenges. So we, we more or less switched uh, our logo uh, to test technology center because we believe that we have to, to develop new technology to test uh, new new generation parts. Um, and that's why we, uh, we changed that uh, on, the, on our building. So a little bit more about uh, Salon Engineering. Let me move to the next slide. So Salon Engineering has two main divisions. One of the divisions is uh, focusing on delivering solutions in test. That's why I had to, somehow it's an automatic uh, stuff, unfortunately. Um, so we are doing some uh, test application solutions. So, oh, oh, I, sorry about that. Um, so we are creating test solutions to test uh, normal chips. And what we also do is we creating the hardware uh, for final tests, for probing. And in the meantime, we have uh, invested quite a lot in having an uh, automatic test for. It means that we also can do uh, high volume testing. And uh, so in that respect, we are getting there to test millions or ten, ten, several tens of a million parts uh, per year to test inside uh, Salander in Zwolle. And uh, for that, we invested heavily in probers and testers to, to do that. The other part of the company is creating new instruments and new test IP for the industry. As well as on the right side, you see uh, bench equipment to help customers not only to do a testing in high volume, but also to test uh, parts in the lab when once they have the silicon back from the fact factory, um, for a smart photonics, for example, um, to test it on the desk and in the labs to do a lot of characterization. So we also focusing now on um, creating these, uh, yeah, of, uh, characterization labs in a, in a box because uh, you can buy a lot of rack and stack equipment, but it's always taking a lot of time to put everything together yourself. And so that's why we are creating these things together. And that's what we're also going to do in this PITC program. We will do more automation so that a customer has a test rack. In that respect, we're already working with the Technical University of Eindhoven as well as with Ficontech and, and many others to determine the specifications. So a little bit more about the the trends in the industry. So we see that uh, yeah, new new parts uh, they need to have uh, they need to be faster, quicker. Uh, getting uh, the, the the coverage is getting more demanding. We're getting a lifetime is getting shorter because everything is going much faster. So also time to market is is very important. And in that respect, we we also said okay for all the new new coming uh, technologies we need to be more clever and to do uh, more things in, an, in a different way to, to test parts. Uh, and like my previous uh, presenters already said that testing is getting more expensive and more difficult. So um, once you are doing the production test, uh, you should focus on different aspects of the testing than in, in design or just after design. And um, let me guide you as well a little bit about our uh, challenges in making instruments for the, the, the next generation parts. We, we see a little bit conflicting, like I think everybody in this engineering space, we see conflicting um, parameters. 
We are creating, for example, instruments for devices of tomorrow. We are creating with devices of, of yesterday because it takes a while before you make and make a new instrument. So in that respect, we are using technology of the, the yesterday, but we like to address the, the instruments uh, for the future and, and, and taking that in account that most of the time the instruments are quite expensive. They're seen as capex, but they have to last uh, 20, 15 to 20 years. And uh, already said as well earlier today, you try to do as much as possible and at the lowest cost. And also that is conflicting with each other. Uh, also, it takes quite a bit time to develop the new instrumentation. And in that respect, we have to find new ways to test uh, future components. Uh, so be more being more innovative. So as an example, um, a few years ago, we worked as well in a consortium uh, and it was called Meteorite, where we created together with uh, Bronkhorst. They are a gas, uh, gas flow meter company. They are making end products, but they saw as well that the yield was not optimum. And so therefore they asked us and uh, the Technical University of Enschede and Saxion and Meester to assist to create a new test technology to test the MEMS components which were the base of their uh, gas flow meters. And as you see on the left side, you see we try to do the modeling of how you physically stimulate a MEMS structure and what kind of responses you want to measure. And we translated then that into the electrical domain. And then we created what you see in the middle. You see uh, what we created on electrical uh, generation of signals, biasing signals, and then measuring the signals back to validate a MEM structure. And one of the first products we created out of this uh, proof of concept uh, phase we, is a low capacitance meter that is able to test femto uh, ferrets with atovarov resolution. You see eight channels on the board, so it's also addressing the lower cost and, and doing more things in parallel compared to uh, an, one of A-class uh, uh, capacitance measurement and, and, and test instrument company. We are doing eight eight times more in in a quarter of the time, so that's uh, helping uh, smart photonics as well in the future to uh, to to get to this one hour or less than one hour testing away from. So what what that brings to us to the PITC in this uh, program is that we uh, we we don't have a lot of or we didn't had a lot of uh, uh, experience like somebody some other people in the uh, consortium is in the photonic and the integrated photonic uh, area arena. So, but we do have uh, 30 years experience in creating instruments, creating instruments for high volume, high parallel testing. And in that respect, we are very keen to participate in this program because it gives us the ability to do what we can do well, but also to learn and to cooperate others that can have the integrated photonic uh, uh, expertise. So in that respect, we learned a lot already from the from the participants in what they need and also what they are missing today in the uh, test and measurement world and into the high volume test world. So here you see a few of the examples. So we decided to uh, to address the power power domain because a lot of uh, integrated photonic parts they need to have uh, different voltages than and more uh, channels than you can buy today in, uh, in PXI format. Um, so we are now working on to create this power supply. Thanks to the support of uh, the participants, we know what, what to make. Also what Augustine already said, we data, data and, and more data. So we had already some tooling inside Saland to uh, examine normal uh, chips, normal electrical chips. So we are now adding additional uh, functionality to the tool and enhance more reporting, automatic reporting, to to be able to visualize the, uh, a lot of data because a lot of data is nice, but if you cannot, if you can visualize it to focus on the right spots, you can do uh, your anal analysis much much quicker. The other part is uh, indeed automation that already was mentioned by the two previous presenters. We also are working um, because of our industry know-how about how to control probers, how to control testers. We are now working to make a kind of uh, shell around uh, all the equipment that is typically used in these uh, integrated photonic test setups. 
we are combining all these things together so that we really can automate a much more and a more deeper way, including data collection and to spit it out into the uh, factory automation systems to, uh, yeah, to be able to make fast conclusions. Uh, so that's uh, that's our yeah reason for participating in this uh, program, and uh, like I said, we already have uh, uh, yeah got some benefits of it because we can already uh, yeah learn from others how to to test and what are the challenges uh, on these uh, items. All right, thank you very much, Paul, for your uh, presentation. I think. The expertise you bring with solid engineering from the, let's say, the semiconductor industry is something very valuable um, to add in on the on the on the PITC programs as well, um, yeah, because that, that's something also that's needed in order to scale. I think your best practices, your that, that's something really valuable. So I'm I'm really glad to see uh, solid engineering participating in the program. Um, you you mentioned a couple of things. I think uh, yeah, it's interesting. You guys have to deal with. You have to be quite creative, or or use imagination, right? That you uh, have to develop testing methodologies with the equipment that's not yet existing. So that's uh, that's that's quite challenging, but also quite interesting from from that perspective. Um, in the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned the trends more than more, um, yeah, which is also the trend of mixing different technologies, um, even adding completely different ones like photonics into the game, uh, which makes the testing also more and more complex. Uh, you mentioned a couple of these things, like the differences in voltages uh, and channels. Um, are there any other uh, differences or difficulties that you see uh, of adding uh, these different platforms, adding photonics into the mix? Yeah, definitely one of the items, and that's where we are now as well talking with uh, Ficontech, how to do the alignment of uh, when you need to have the lights into in and out to the, the parts, um, how, how we can work together there. They have uh, many years already experience of doing the alignment of uh, getting lights in and out of chips. Uh, we have the ability to make high density instruments, so that's why we are now as well aligning further with Ficontech, how we can combine forces. Uh, each on their uh, specialism. They are cre creating equipment. We are as well doing the test house and that's what we also envision for the future that we can be a test house for uh, where Smart Photonics is creating the, the wafers. Mm -hmm. But we also can do the testing in, in higher volume or even big volume for the uh, industry in the Netherlands, in Europe, uh, around the world. I'm not aware if there's any test house in the world yet that really can offer this as a service. So we, we like to be there the first one. Yes. And um, since we're already cooperating with a lot of larger ATE companies um, and they have found us to, to do part of their development of their systems, we also see a good uh, bridge from the Netherlands uh, with all the infrastructure and PITC to inject that in the future to the really large players in the market. They are not really jumping on this yet, but they are following us very carefully. Uh, in September, they will come to the Netherlands to our test symposium. And uh, there, there will be a lot of uh, key gentlemen from companies that are a thousand times bigger than we when, than we are, but they come to the Netherlands because there's a, a lot of yeah, know-how about testing in the Netherlands. And uh, so that would be as well opportunity for others uh, to uh, to join, and and yeah, make sure <clears throat> sure that the world knows that we we can do great things in the Netherlands. So yes, yeah, indeed. Well, thank you very much, uh, Paul, and also great to hear these uh, ambitions. Uh, Salon taking a central position in the uh, as a testing house for for integrated photonics. I think the opportunities are there, and, and you certainly have the capabilities in house when it comes to the the, the expertise in the electronic domain. So I uh, wish you all the best, and and we stay in touch. Uh, thank you again, Paul. And it's time for us to conclude this episode of uh, Delta Dialogues. Before we, before we conclude, uh, the Delta Dialogues is always open for new suggestions and ideas when it comes to the content of the episodes. Uh, we try always to uh, fit everything into a, a specific theme. So if you have any ideas or any suggestions, you could please scan this QR code or simply go to the Photon Delta website to the event section and click on the Delta Dialogues where you can submit a form, uh, whether it's a speaker, a theme, a topic, anything is more than welcome because we want this call to be 
as relevant as it can be for you, the integrated photons community. Um, also, if you have any feedback on the how we can make this call even more valuable, how we can bring more to the table, please also scan this QR code or go to the website and fill this out. The Next Delta Dialogues episode will be in September, as for August we will uh, not be broadcasting since of the summer breaks. Um, so it leaves me to wish you all a, a very nice summer break ahead for those who are uh, taking a holiday. And we will see you again in September, the first Wednesday of September, which is the 6th. Thank you very much for watching and see you then.